I would like to start with an invocation to the spirit of our ancestors and to the spirit of Goddess Ah, to welcome them in our midst and to ask for their guidance and protection to them. It do do And in addition to that, 
these icons of every religion play an important role in rituals. But icons and rituals of their own self do not amount to anything. Because icons and rituals are always embedded within a sacred uh, scripture, whether it is oral or written. And what I'm going to share with you today, this city of GPS, is from the sacred scriptures of the Father, which is the sacred scriptures of all Orishan religions and its denominations, which includes Canton Bay in Brazil, Santaria in the US, Brazil, Cuba, Batuki, Banga, Asia, uh, African Kuru, and to, to some extent, Asia Kuru has some elements of Orishan religion. The best way to think about or to relate to these holy scriptures is to think of it as um, a man, a source for things like higher physics, views about the kind of entities that populate the world, a source for issues about epistemology, how to go about learning new things about yourself and about the world, ethics, aesthetics, and various other things. Today, my focus will be on ethics. What are the ethical principles that we can generate from the fact? <coughs> to fully understand what is involved in ethics from this point of view, it's, a little, it's necessary for us to identify the various types of entities that are place with them. Issues of ethics arise in situations where your actions or inactions affect other living things and natural things. But what are living things? What are natural things? What are the kind of things that are made to The Orisha or Yoruba world is heavily populated in different types of entities, and I will tell you a little bit about them. From uh, the logic of religions like Christianity and Islam, seniority or hierarchy in those religions are determined by how old an entity is. So God is at the apex of the hierarchy because in the beginning there was always God. For which a religion, if we are going to take that approach, for us there are four entities that are always in existence. These are the rules by the Ifa or Batala issue. I will say a little bit more about these entities as we go along, but I'll just call your attention to two of them for now. Ulodumari is the first one. Ulodumari is often mistranslated as a supreme name. Ulodumari in our conception is not supreme. Ulodumari is really nothing more than the preferred life. Anything that has life has an interference with the human presence in it. So, the human for us is like that we are not in the spiritual entity. The second entity I'll call your attention to is Ishu. Ishu is a universal policy. Ishu is responsible for law and order in this cosmos. So, these four entities are always in existence and they created all the other supernatural powers. Secondly, and then we created humans, plants, and animals. And if you follow this logic, the ancestors are the babies. Because the first ancestor was a big life as a human person. <coughs> However, that existential hierarchy does not pay, give any um, justice to the complexity of the creation <coughs> Because the complexity of this world requires us to adopt a slightly different logic of thinking. So, in the Usha world, in the world where ethics or Iwakrene is the fundamental principle for the organization of the world and your actions and reactions, we need to separate and distinguish between entities on the right hand side who are uh, described as good by nature. Entities on the left hand side who are illegitimate people, and entities that are neither good nor bad, they are just neutral. So, for example, is either good nor bad. 
Let's say if you uh, want to possess a new outside life. If you genuinely believe that it is a new outside life, and what's right for you is right for you and for another person. Someone who believes that yes, it's not for that person still to you. You should access it. You cannot complain. <laughs> So any type of pleasant position you are doing locks you into that kind of illogicality. And this is precisely why we need to follow the implications of our views to their most logical conclusion. Relativism, if right, is possible. How should we go about identifying those principles that are essential for the governance of human conduct? All societies. And this is where the Omolua aspect is coming. In Western societies generally, people mostly adopt two approaches to ethical reasoning. There is a consequentialist approach, which is the most common. Something is right or wrong. If Depending on how many people it affects, the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Consequentially, follow the consequences. So, uh, various activities like 9 11 are regarded as wars than the police officers shooting one person. Because there is this belief that the more people that are adversely affected, the more bad the action is. Which, to a large extent, is right. But consequentialism in the room focuses on just the consequences of one's actions. How about the rules and principles that inform your actions to start with? So, those who focus on principles are called deontological ethicists. They focus on the nature of your principles, the nature of the rules you adopt, and ask the question of how to universalize it. How likely is it for us to expand the limits of these principles and rules to ensure that they are applicable by every human being in every different situation? So, following the consequences is one approach, following the rules is another approach. The other who are being approached introduces a third one. You see, if you think about it this way, you want to determine whether something is right or wrong. Good, you can look at the consequences, that helps. You can look at the principles on the basis of which your actions are determined. But what about you, the actor? What's your character? What types of virtues are inculcated into your essence as a human person? And the Omanu have been expected emphasizing that as long as you leave your character out of it, we can never really have a genuine ethical principle for guidance in day to day. So, the Omanu Abu perspective is founded upon what is called Iwakwene. Iwakwene is the fundamental guiding principle on the basis of which the 200 million practitioners of the Russian religion and culture of it. And in actual fact, each and every one of the 800 multiplied by 256 poems contained in the Fanny Triangles contains one key advance on how to reform your character, how to enhance your character, how to make sure that you identify the virtues that are important for interpersonal and interhuman relationships. So what we are, for the work of tomorrow, I'm going to um, identify at least 10 of these virtues and see how we can apply them. Uh, but for today, I would like to wrap up or begin wrapping up by letting you appreciate another of those words, but this time it's more English. The first one I started with is also about character. It tells you about existence. But this one has a little bit of English spice into it, so you really appreciate what this is about.
This story is a story from the sacred scriptures of Orisha religion, which is called Ifa. My name is Kola Adinbola. I'm a professor of law. I'm also an Ifa priest. The story goes like this. There was a time when there was someone who was a fierce warrior called Bembe. Okay. And Bembe is also a musical instrument, by the way. It's a drum. He had been fighting for many years and decided that there's this city in the, the northern central parts of Nigeria. They were renowned and ferocious warriors. You know, he said, well, actually, I'm going to go and conquer this city. And uh, of course, in Yoruba culture, before you do any important thing, you go and divine. The funeral, you perform your divination. You just um, won the lottery, you perform your divination. Something like that. So it's part of day-to-day life. And then they went to divine, and they told Ben Ben that, actually, this time around, when you get to the city, instead of waging war, you should make music. And that's how you are going to conquer them. He said, what? Me? I like to fight. He said, from now on, you should make music and stop fighting. And the people of um, the city where I was going to, the Nope people, it's an ethnic group called the Nope, the, the king of the Nope people, also divined. And they warned them that someone is coming to wage war on them. That if they do not fortify themselves and make sacrifices and be humble, they are going to be conquered. Everyone in the king's palace started to laugh. We're a city of warriors. Everyone here is a warrior. Our women are warriors. Our children, the the moment they start walking, they start picking up the sword and playing with instruments of warfare. And you're saying just one being is coming to conquer us? Then no. If that's all that is coming to do, we have already won. So they didn't offer sacrifice. Only dim dim goda, remere me goda. Adifafun bembe, tin sha wo lo si ilu elempe, adifafun elempe jiga ina abarawusa ojo palami oka tu yeri yeri. Oni din din goda, reme reme goda, din din goda, reme reme goda, din din goda. Well, when bembe arrived, they were expecting him to come with guns and um, armories and stuff like that. He just started playing music. Um, sonorous and people started teaming out of their houses they started dancing so he conquered them with music music binds people together it's an important force in holding society together
Someone steals a loaf of bread and you shoot your friends. The example of proportionality is large. Proportionality is essential. Truth is also important. But what do we mean by truth? I will say not to follow about what truth is, but at a very brief compass, there are three ways in which we can think about truth. I think about it in terms of correspondence with reality, what exists in reality. Oftentimes, what exists in reality is not is difficult to determine. Secondly, we can think of truth in terms of coherence. How well does the story we tell hang together, even if it's a false story? And oftentimes, the American people have just these senses to be based upon this perverse sense of truth. The third way by which you can think about truth is to think of it in terms of how the virtues of the Wamele are inculcated into your speech such that honesty, honesty and all the other and proportionality ooze out of your character in assessing and assessing things which are which you regard as true or false. So those are some of the key features of uh, the Wamele. And above all, Iwakwele is also about the kind of Iwakwele in the world. In fact, some people describe Iwakwele as ethics. If you are having a case of Iwakwele to your daily life, you probably will never have a great pressure. And in fact, uh, my grandmother, who died about four years ago at the age of 115. Yes, and she was very active and walked around until the last two years of her life when she had cataracts and decided she was too cold to be a bit of I once asked her what was the secret to love her. And she told me, good and gentle will come. So I will uh, stop there, but before I stop, I would like to welcome my ancestors here again and say thank you for coming. In, uh, with another chance and invitation from this side to the world, which is one of the most important missions in this country. <laughs> It is my prayer and wish that you all find a way of harnessing the good characters that are all that are implicit in the essence of your beings. Because until you harness the essence of your own true being, you are likely to find your true path and life. So incorporate what we have and its principles into everything we do. And tomorrow I will give you some clear cut directions on how to make use of this GPS as a guide to your life. Thank you.